So this video is not going to be my typical laptop review videos. This video is not for tech enthusiasts because I feel as though people are blinded by spec sheets and benchmarks, which I will say for these chips in particular kind of matter for compatibility purposes as well. So no benchmarks. There's a bigger picture that I'm trying to address here. We've been waiting for these laptops all year, specifically the tech community. The purpose of this video is to let you know what everyone seems to be missing about this laptop. I believe the biggest feat above anything else is the amount of performance you're getting in a form factor like this. It's proof that we don't have to compromise on design changes like this. Something that doesn't go on a spec sheet. Apple is really good at selling through experience. Here's what I'm going to relate to so you guys can see the bigger picture. When going for form factors like this, we had to suffer with significantly worse displays, speakers, build quality, specifically with last generation MacBooks, loud fan noise, high temperatures, and above all else, significantly worse performing chips like the U and Y processors from their low wattage or just other laptop specific processors. There's always a trade-off for portability, which still exists, but Hopefully in the next two, three years, the gap will get smaller with the improvement of the M series. The trade-off is, okay, so I want portability, so I'll take a hit on all those other things. There aren't any more sacrifices we have to make, but there are caveats with that I will address at the end of this video. But think about this on a bigger scale, especially the price too. There are people in my comments sending me DMs as well that they wish they could afford the MacBook Pro. They wish they could afford the MacBook Pro 16 inch or a more powerful laptop, but they always have to settle for what's in their budget. They want a computer that doesn't flex, a computer that doesn't sound like a rocket going into space. Come here. Closer. Let me tell you something. No more. Get your wallet or your Apple card that you can finance at 24 months, no interest. I'm not a legal financial advisor, so don't take advice from a random guy speaking about laptops, but the M1 processor is capable of going toe to toe in some instances against the base level 16 inch MacBook Pro for half the cost. And if we're talking about the Mac mini, which isn't really a fair comparison because it's supposed to be a desktop replacement, it's like a third of the cost. Now, obviously there's a dedicated graphics component, better display, better performance, bigger chassis to accommodate for all those extra powerful components inside, but you're also getting a louder machine. But if you're able to get desktop level performance, sometimes exceed that in instances and get amazing battery life, who cares if this thing thermal throttles in Cinebench R20 in 10 minutes? Because 10 minutes of pinning this chip, this laptop isn't worthy for you because reviewers are probably doing back to back to back to back to back benchmarks, possibly on the same battery cycle. And this thing doesn't make a sound. I don't even think this fan works in the MacBook Pro, honestly. And it's still not good enough for you. My old MacBook sounds like it's in the final scene of a Fast and Fur Furious movie, just opening up Chrome to Google.com. The new air is dead silent. That alone for me is good enough to make the jump. Take out the fan in your laptop, tell me when it starts thermal throttling, pinning the machine with all those benchmarks for hours on end. That's the incredible thing about these M1 processors. The other major feat is even with this major design change, for the average consumer, I guarantee you no one is going to experience a difference. If I place this M1 laptop in front of my friends and family, and I placed an Intel-based MacBook in front of them, and I said, use them both and tell me how it feels. I guarantee you, they come back and say there's no difference. If you can do something as radical as switching to ARM, and it, the user doesn't experience anything different from what they're used to for like the last decade, that in itself is a technological feat to marvel over. Now, do keep in mind there are some applications that straight up don't work, but from the testing that I've done, for a lot of people who do stuff through the web browser and buying Apple products, you tend to stay within Apple apps, feel as though most people are going to be okay. It's really just going to be developers having to accommodate for 
the wider audience in the upcoming years. The next major thing is battery life. This is the longest battery life ever in a Mac. That's impressive. Era. 17 hours for wireless web browsing and up to 20 hours for video playback. That's 10 more hours than before. And that's the longest battery life ever in a Mac. Oh and with this combination God. of performance. Now imagine charging this overnight and just taking the laptop itself and not having to worry about when your laptop is going to die for the whole day and you're still getting the full performance out of it. That is one less thing to carry throughout the day. I wish I had these laptops in college. It's like an electric car. Charge it at home and then when you're out and about, you still get great performance. It's quiet, enjoyable experience. What else could you ask for? Depending on your workload, obviously, but for most people, I feel as though you're going to get through a realistically a nine to five day without using the charger. That is impressive. I wanna end this quick review on two things. One of them being the caveats I mentioned earlier and Intel specifically. So the caveats, earlier I said there are not as many sacrifices we have to make with these M1 processors, but new caveats have arrived, or I should say new sacrifices, or not sacrifices, new challenges have arrived because not everything about this laptop is great. It can't be great. Everything in this machine is truly designed by Apple in California, the ins and outs. Apple has full control of this machine. Apple can control how much performance jumps they can have year to year. They can control how much support the life cycle of this chip should be. Although it may just be me having too much faith in Apple, but in terms of their competitors, I feel as though whenever they present, they always compare themselves to themselves first and then their competitors. So I guess that's a good thing in a way that they're always comparing themselves and then competitors. But this fusion and hardware software of the ecosystem is great with other Apple products. But app compatibility will be the biggest issue. And if you do decide to pick up this laptop and you do, I don't want to say arbitrary things, if you do more stuff than the typical applications like Microsoft Word, all the web conferencing tools and browsers, you might experience some growing pains for the next two years. So going back on the topic of support, people in my comments always ask me in my laptop reviews, how long will this laptop last me? Five years, seven years? And the answer is, I genuinely don't know. And with these machines, it's an even bigger question mark because this isn't a tablet, this isn't the iPad, this isn't a watch, this isn't a phone, this is a laptop, something that people intend to keep for many years. So it would be surprising to me that Apple would just discard the M1 chip after a couple of years. I have a feeling in two years, there's going to be a major redesign and it might even be as soon as November, 2021 that we see a redesign, who knows? But redesign or not, I caution you, whatever you do, whatever purchase you make, just be happy with it. If you always have buyer remorse because you're too busy looking at new stuff all the time, then I'm gonna be honest, you probably shouldn't jump ship to this M1 processor because I guarantee you in a few years, you will be disappointed. For people who are happy with their purchases and use their products to their last leg, hey, 2011 and 2012 users, welcome to the new generation of MacBooks. So the last thing I want to leave is the topic of Intel. And Intel, I'm talking to you as if you were my close friend because I grew up with you genuinely. I wasn't there for the power PC to Intel switch because I didn't own a MacBook back then. I don't know how young I was, but every laptop and desktop I've owned has been Intel based except for the desktop I built earlier this year, which is AMD. I had to do food delivery service on foot during college and had to take an hour bus ride just so I can afford the Devil Canyon i7-4790K. And building that first machine gave me so much love for computers. But seriously, despite everyone wanting you to fail, this is your moment. Your back is against the wall. AMD is sweeping the desktop landscape with their 5000 series well, if you can buy one, <laughs> the 4,000 mobile processors that AMD also has, people are questioning, do I even buy Intel anymore at all? Should I just buy AMD, AMD? And now Apple is leaving you? So I left you for the 3900X and honestly, 
I don't miss Intel that much, especially in terms of the value. It, it really only seems like people go for stability and compatibility for Intel, but AMD seems to be bridging that gap and at a competitive price point too. So all I can say, Intel, is just get your act together. Get out of your bubble because AMD isn't beating you up alone anymore. Apple's joined in on the fun. I can't defend you anymore. You brought this upon yourself. All I can really say is come back and prove to me and everyone else that you are the greatest chip maker. Otherwise, Apple is going to keep clowning you with ads like this. Why? Why? Why make all these advancements? What's the point? Right? Oh, you're so quiet now. Look, I'm a machine. I'm proud of it. That's my fan. Longer battery life. Plug it in. Where are you going? Just plug it in. Fast. I'm fast. I'm still fast. Check it out. I still got it. PC, still got it. Okay. My battery's drained. I gotta go plug in. Good luck. Woo! So with all that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this review of the M1 processors. Comparisons of the Intel chips will be coming soon. Just wanted to get this out the way. Would have been cool to have AMD MacBooks, but excited for the new decade of technology. Appreciate each sub, like, comment, and as always, guys, much love. I'm going to now edit this video on this MacBook Air in dead silent. 4K, by the way, HEVC. Like, just think about that. That's crazy, man. On a MacBook Air. It's crazy.